Hi everyone. In this video, we're looking at one of the big changes in Avada 7, the introduction of Flexbox for containers and columns. With Avada 7, we have completely reimagined both the container and column elements, basing them on CSS Flexbox. At the same time, we have kept our classic setup for containers and columns, in case you want to keep using it on pre-existing sites. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. So what is Flexbox? Basically, Flexbox is a CSS3 layout model that allows responsive elements within a container to be automatically arranged depending upon screen size. The main idea behind the Flex layout is to give a container the ability to alter its item's width, height, and order to best fill the available space, mostly to accommodate all kinds of display devices and screen sizes. So how does this play out in the builder? Well, to start, there are now two types of containers, flex and legacy containers. If you are on a new install of Avada from Avada 7 and up, you will have the new flex containers by default. Likewise, for existing sites that update to Avada 7, all new containers will be flex containers but all existing content will remain legacy containers. If you want the whole site to use the new Flex containers, simply go to Global Options, Avada Builder Elements, Container, and turn the Enable Legacy option off. All containers will convert to the Flex model. You can always enable this again to revert the containers to how they were. Just note that not all setups can be 100% converted to Flex mode and automatically remain identical. Our recommendation is that after updating, you should turn off legacy mode in the options. Unless you have problems with the way the containers display, we would suggest leaving this off and only using the new flex options. If you have problems on only a couple of containers of the website, then we would suggest disabling legacy and then manually updating that area with the new options. But you have the choice to leave it as it is. OK, so let's now look at the new options found in flex containers and columns in Avada 7. You will find new options in both elements, and the main way this change affects how you build is in alignment and justification options. In the container element, you'll see three new options, row alignment, column alignment, and column justification. And in the column element, you'll find the new alignment option and the content alignment option. To get a visual idea of what these five new options can do in practice, let's look at a few examples. OK, let's start with the container. I have legacy support enabled on this site, and so as you can see at the top, the first option is to choose between Flex and Legacy for the container type. I have chosen Flex, and the first Flexbox option we can see here is Row Alignment. You won't see this if the container height is set to Auto. So for this example, I have chosen Minimum Height, and set the Minimum Height to 90VH, a unit which sets the container's height to 90% of the viewport height. This option will only have full effect if multiple rows are present. Row alignment defines how rows should be aligned vertically within the container. A row is the space the columns take up in the container before they break to a new row. The default value is stretch, which means the row will stretch to take up all available space. Note how the columns themselves are not changing in size with this option, as this is the row that is being affected. In terms of positioning, with two rows in the container, this actually means that the rows are each placed in 50% of the container height and aligned to the top, with the first row taking up to 50% of the available vertical height, and the second row under that also aligned to the top of its 50%. With the Flex Start selection, as you can see, both rows of columns are now aligned to the top of the container. With the Center selection, both rows of columns are aligned in the center of the container. With the Flex End selection, both rows of columns are aligned to the bottom of the container. With the Space Between selection, both rows are aligned to the top and the bottom of the container respectively, maximising the space between them. With the Space Around selection, both rows are aligned in the middle of their 50% area, with the same amount of space above and below them. This is why the space in the middle is twice as big as the space above and below the rows. And with the Space Evenly selection, the available space in the container is equally divided between above between and below the rows of columns. OK, let's move on to column alignment. I have another container here with three columns that have varying amounts of content. The container height here is just set to auto, 
and so column alignment is the first flex option we see. This option allows you to select how you want your columns to align within rows. Flex start is the default selection, and as such, the columns are all aligned to the top of the container. Less of course the container padding. The center selection aligns the columns along their center point. The flex end selection aligns the columns by their bottom edge. While the stretch selection makes the columns all the same height, stretching the shortest columns to the height of the tallest. This is how you achieve equal heights of columns with flex. Note however that there is no alignment of the elements inside these columns. For this there is the content alignment option, found in the actual columns, which we will look at in a bit. I'll just set this back to flex start. Now let's look at column justification. This allows you to select how the columns will be justified horizontally in the container. For this to have any effect, the row cannot be full. If the columns that make up the row add up to the full width, for example three one-third columns as they are here, then clearly there's no room to justify the content horizontally at all. If however I delete a column, then there is room for horizontal justification. Let's look at the various options. We can see that flex start is the default setting for this option. This of course places the columns at the start of the row in the container. On pages using the 100% width template, this is obviously also affected by the interior content width option. Here I have the container set to site width, and so that's what determines the start point. The next one is center, and here we can see the columns are now centered in the container. Flex end is the next option we have, and that of course places them at the end of the row in the container. Then we have space between. This selection places each column at either end of the container to maximize the space between. The space around selection places the same amount of space on each side of each column. Note that visually the space is unequal since all the items have equal space on both sides, within the site width. The first item will have one unit of space against the container edge, but two units of space between the next item, because that next item has its own spacing that also applies. And finally space evenly distributes the columns so that the spacing between any two items and the space to the edges, in this case the site width, is equal. Another example where this option might be quite useful is when you want to center align a partial width column on the page. If I just delete one more column and set the justification to center, we can easily achieve that without any other empty columns to control its position. Okay, let's move on to the options in the individual columns. The first one is just called alignment. This defines how the column should align itself within the container and overrides anything that is set on the corresponding container option. The main difference to note here is that the container column alignment option affects all the columns inside the container, while the column alignment option only affects the column it is set on. This gives you enormous flexibility with your columns. Let's use our history states to restore the two columns I deleted, so we can check this one out. If I just go back to the container column alignment option, we can see that I can adjust all columns here by setting the column alignment to center, flex end, or stretch. But using the alignment option in the column overrides this and just sets it on the individual column. So for this example I'll edit and align an individual column. As the initial value for this option is default, this means that it inherits from whatever is set on the container column alignment option. In this case that is flex start. And so when changing to the flex start selection, because the parent container option is also set to that, the selection does not change anything. If I change the column alignment to center, then the column aligns itself to the middle of this container. Flex end alignment aligns the bottom of the column to the bottom of the container, less any container padding. The last value stretch aligns the column to the height of the container, again less any padding. So much flexibility. Okay, and then finally there is the content alignment option. This option allows you to control the alignment of the content within the individual columns. This option only works for columns where the content column alignment option or the individual column alignment option has been set to stretch. So let's do that. I'll continue with these columns but I'll just go into the container column alignment and set that to stretch. See how the columns are now the same height? But there is only alignment with the titles at the top. Let's see how this option can adjust the alignment of the content within the individual columns. Flex start is the default selection with this option. The titles align at the top, but that is all. If I select center on all three columns, 
This centers the content within each column. Note however that due to the differing amounts of content in the middle column, only the two outside columns content aligns. Now if I select Flex End on all three columns, this aligns the content along the bottom of the column, but now the titles are not aligned. Space between is the next possibility, and again if I select that on all three columns, in this situation this arguably gives us the best results, as it means that the top and the bottom of the content are aligned, with the space distributed in between. Then we have space around, where if we apply that to all three columns, the content is almost aligned, but because the middle column has a differing amount of content, it doesn't quite align with the other two. And finally we have space evenly. Again, if I align all three columns with this setting, in this situation the content is almost aligned, but again because the middle column has a differing amount of content, it doesn't quite align with the other two. So depending on the amount of content you have in your columns, these options will work quite differently to the example shown here. And with equal amounts of content, you'll have the most options. And of course you can apply these to individual columns for totally unique results. There are a few other options in the Flex Containers and Columns that are also enabled by Flexbox. These are the Order option in the Columns element, and the Responsive Option Set feature found in both. For more information on both of these, please see the How to Set the Display Order and Size of Columns in Responsive Layouts, and the Responsive Option Sets document. So as the name suggests, and the examples bear out, Flexbox is all about flexibility of layout. With the introduction of Flexbox into the structural column and container elements, we have now introduced an unprecedented level of flexibility when it comes to layout and alignment of containers and their child columns. Okay, this concludes our video on introducing Flexbox for containers and columns. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.